Hello and welcome in this course of Linux, Unix, Cell and Cell Script. I am Nilesh Godhani. I am working in field of computer programming since uh, last 15 years. Throughout my career I have mostly used Linux and Unix kind of operating systems. And now I think that's enough about me. So let's move to a course overview. So in first chapter of the course, I, I give you detailed introduction of cell and cell process where you learn about the type of cell and cell configs. So primary focus of first chapter remains on a cell. In, in the next chapter, I explain you various purpose of the cell and cell script. Further, we will jump into the practical session. So, in the first practical session, uh, I'll give you introduction about subbing variables into cell script, command line arguments, and cell functions. And then further, in a next practical session, we'll go more in detail where, where we learn uh, like. Uh, Synchronous and asynchronous command execution, cell special variables, and then cell script exist status, and looping and conditional constructs, where we will learn about the cell language provided uh, conditional and looping constructs like uh, for loop, uh, while, then if, and case based conditional statements. With uh, this introduction, I think let's move to first chapter now. Thank you. So welcome back. So in this chapter, we will learn about what is cell and cell script. So cell, cell is a command interpreter and programming language. So at the base level, a cell is a simple microprocess that execute command so as a command executor cell provides uh, interface user interface to reach set of linux commands to end user and as a programming language it provides a way to combine all this rich set of command into script now what is the cell script so cell script is a set of instruction or we can say program that designed to run by cell so whatever we run uh, into a cell that in short is a kind of cell script okay so now let me go to the next step that is type of cell so gives a little history about the cell and cell processes so in a linux and unix kind of os and the two cell process that is very well known one is sh and second one is bash so sh is uh, also called called as a born cell because that is developed by stephen born at the bell lab and previously it was developed by Thomas Thompson. So the, that is called Thompson cell, which also has an executable name as SH. So this cell is development is started around uh, 1976. Then, then as a part of GME project, the base cell is enhanced and uh, rewritten so so that is and the new cell is known as a born again cell so that is a bass uh, was in 1899 developed as a part of GME project so basically base cell combines the features of many cells so it has all the asset cell features 
this is uh, de uh, derived uh, corn cells feature c cells features so we can say as uh, base is a superset of assets so it uh, also backward compatible it supports all the asset syntax as well and it uh, supports additional new language support as well and it's POSIX compliant so what is POSIX so POSIX is a set of standards with unified OS level interfaces so it, it called as a portable operating system interfaces so the base is also the uh, POSIX compliance as I said there is some other cells also available but uh, as part of this sessions we are not going to into detail but yes, to name some of them uh, uh, C cell is there corn cell is there Z SH that is Z cell is there but uh, nowadays most of the OS Linux based OS have base as a default cell now in a cell config part uh, I'll give you detail about the base cell configuration for that uh, let first go to console so I'll, I'll show you practical example of uh, cell and cell configuration okay. so here you if you see uh, um, this dollar sign so i'm in uh, sale of my terminal process so basically when terminal as a gui application we launch it it in the background launch some uh, cell process which provides this kind of prompt this is called cell okay. so now let's check like which particular asset cell is there in my machine so for that i execute which asset so this which command basically finds the the asset binary within a search path so yeah it says a bin asset and also search for bass so it says bin bass so this two cell binaries are all available in my system so bin is a bin asset is a corn cell bin bass is bass cell so let's check the version of bass bin as bass 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 version so it says it says gnu bass version 3257 okay so the now if we check the help of bin bass this help option is there so shows like uh, there are multiple options when we execute bass the debug option is there and various other switch are there this one is interesting so so when the cell can be run as a, in the two mode once we log in that is called login cell and one which we normally run it's uh, execute process in a normal mode okay. so base is a two configuration file one is called uh, home slash base rc so this file reads by this base process every time when base uh, process get executed okay so let me write something in this file so you can see like this file getting executed so here i have written welcome from base rc okay i have shown this to star so you notice that now if I run a bass so you see like I'm now in bass cell and this is a welcome prompt so this welcome prompt coming from bass rc 
So previously I was in a terminal cell. I, I executed bash, so I'm now in sub cell that is bash cell. And here again, if I execute bash, so again I'm uh, there is a new cell process get invoke, and I'm part of. So I'm now in that process. If I fire exit command, so now I'm exit from the last cell, and now I get a prompt for previous cell. If I exit again, then now I am in a root cell. If I exit from here, then this terminal process get exit. Okay. So the base RC file that is execute every time. There is one other file called the profile profile or base profile so both is valid either you create a file with a profile name or either you create underscore base profile so this should be in a home directory so your till sign represent my home directory okay. let me create a file with profile okay. Here also I uh, we can sample repo statement. And let's change it to welcome. Welcome from bus the profile. Okay. So now if I run a bus. So you see like uh, as of now only we are getting a welcome prompt from bash rc not from a dot profile so let me exit but if i run this base in a login mode then you see a welcome from a base profile so when cell login it reads the uh, profile or bash profile and then it execute in a normal way it it runs the base rc so you can use these files to like add many other functionality like for example like in in, in your terminal if you need a one function every time then you can add in there so you need to set your system binary paths and you want to add some additional path into system search path right you can also add that here for example like currently my path in my system is pointing to this set of directories but if i want to add any additional path then i can export this into a base profile so every time I, I execute a base or I log into terminal I get that path so I think now it's clear like how how we execute cell and what all cell processes available okay so Let's move to our next session now. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. So in this session, we'll do some practical on cell script and we'll learn a command line arguments in a script, functions within a script, variable and variable scopes. Okay, so let's move to cell okay so now i'm in cell prompt and uh, let's create one sample script so i'm going to create very basic cell script so for that let me open a vi editor and that give a cell script name learn.sh so you, you can write a cell script on 
any id or any tax editor of your cho choice uh, editor can be a cli or editor can be a geo editor uh, currently i am writing in the vi so first line i'm adding is bin bash so what this line mean i'm, I'm explaining you in few minutes let, let uh, write a simple echo statement into this script hello student okay so echo is cell built-in command cell itself has the echo support so this is very simple script so if i want to execute using a bash cell then i write a bash and land.sh so the script get executed and we get the output hello student uh, now let's see if we want to execute this learn as a command instead of executing it via bass so how how we can do that we can directly write this file name as a command so i'm executing this file so first it says a permission denied because if i check this file and.sh it's only in read write mode for user nilesh gudani it's not executable so let's first give executable permission for this file so ch mode is command and i'm giving plus x means execute permission for current user to learn.sh and if i again check command now i have execute permission here Okay. so now i can execute land.sh okay so same output i'm getting but now you imagine that like uh, i've executed this directly without uh, any cell so which particular cell executed this uh, the script right so for that this first line is very important so this is called c bank or has bank so this is special line in every cell start with uh, has an exclamatory mark and then by interpreter name so basically this line is understood by a program loader so when program loader loads it in first line if it uh, finds the c bank or has bank it 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 passed the rest of program or script to uh, the provided uh, interpreter so here we have provided bash as an interpreter so it passed this whole rest program to a bash if i write a message here that mean like now when i execute the script again the script is executed by sh so now we have learned what is say bang so now let's learn about the command line argument suppose like uh, if you want to execute this uh, particular script with some argument right like uh, for example student name i need to pass as a argument here let's see if i pass a student name abc then like a uh, script should uh, provide a message like hello abc as of now uh, th th there is a static message hello student is there into script but let's say if i want uh, the name to be re read from command line then i can pass as a com argument to the script but let's learn how how we can read that 
inside the script okay so for that uh, there is some special command line variables that is dollar one dollar two that kind of common line variables are there cell special variables are there so this dollar one represents a first common line argument so if now i execute in the script from my current directory Lando SH and if I pass ABC then it prints hello ABC. If I say XYZ it says hello XYZ. Okay. Now let's talk about variables. So in cell we can define a variable. So let's define a name as a variable. So I say name equal to let's say Nibes. See it's a key value pair name. I must send a value Nibes and I can refer that variable same way. Hello, Nilis. You can refer variable without curly braces as well, like this one. So it says Nilis, Nilis again, but curly braces is highly recommended because for example after variable name if you want to open some other string or you want to continue uh, a string after replacement of variable then cell won't understand like this is variable for example after name if the colon is there then now it's difficult for cell to understand this as a complete variable so that's why this curly basis is important Now you can define a variable a variable should start with uh, word a variable cannot start with a number this number is reserved like dollar one dollar two uh, as a common line argument substitution so you can't use uh, uh, can't create a variable uh, that is starting with uh, number or you can use underscore now now let define a function in the cell script okay so to define a function there's a two syntax is available let's say we write a function one And then round bracket and there is a color bracket is a body of a function we write some echo statement here welcome from function one Can call this function like this just a function name semicolon is optional semicolon you can add to any instruction after the end of any instruction with echo a function you can call without 
ככה, שמים את כולם בזוועה. So the primary purpose of defining function is like to, to do some repetitive work. For example, if you want to execute group of command repeatedly within your script, then you can define the set of commands within one function and then after you can call a function instead of calling that group of command every time. Okay, so let's uh, execute the script. So you see in the function one is called two time with both syntax. Also you can define function in one other way that is using function keyword and then function name so see in this as function 2 function 2 and let's call function 2 again So you can see now both function is called. So that both syntax is supported. Now you you have defined the variable name with value in English. So let's try to access that variable within a function. Welcome dollar name here I think also I'm adding same welcome dollar name so yeah the variable defined into global scope so that is accessible to function 1 and function 2 as well now let's add one more command line argument to this script and try to print that argument here after name So let, let me write a second equal statement. Okay. Argument one is dollar one. Here also let me write. argument 1 function 2 and function 2 is dollar 1 argument 1 and function 1 ok so I define two function uh, in both I uh, referred a global variable name and now I'm trying to read command line argument one into that both function okay so let's call this script with command line argument test okay so if you see like mm, welcome in this then argument one in function one but uh, here I I'm not getting a test. Why? Because when cell execute a function, right, it it uh, execute that into a sub cell. So this function execute in sub process, and this process uh, function execute into a sub cell process. So that sub cell process do not have access of command line argument passed to parent script. 
okay so here if i want this dollar one then then it's basically argument to the function so here i can pass uh, argument to function so i'm calling function one with uh, string test one and function two with string test two okay so now i execute this then you can see i'm getting a test one and test two now now we have learned about global variables let's say if i want to define a variable their their scope should be limited to a function one then i can find a local variable using a local keyword into cell so i can say local variable one value is test two okay and then i can print using echo local variable one and value is dollar variable one okay as of now i'm leaving this command line for simplicity because that we already learned So I'm calling only function one. To check it's uh, within a local scope. Here also I am accessing same variable. Checking local where one access. And printing same variable variable one which is defined into function one okay let's make this after function call as well see how I have tried to uh, write a variable one uh, print a variable one before function call after function call as well now let's run the script let you see that the variable is not in global scope it's within a function only so within function it is accessible but outside function it's not accessible now one interesting thing like if i call a function 2 within a fun uh, from function 1 like this then can i access the variable of uh, variable that is defined in a function 1 here Local variable in function two. Variable one. Okay. So here from function one, I have called a function two, and I'm trying to print a variable one that is defined to function one into function two. So let's run so it says local variable one in function two is test two so yeah the function defined and function local scope is accessible to other function which is called from that function so basically when function two is uh, uh, called from a function one uh, they say that as 
common namespace so yeah so now we have learned a function command line argument variable scoping so that's all in this session so in next session we'll learn more about the script and asynchronous processing in script thank you hello and welcome back so in previous session we did some practical uh, so in this session as well we do uh, practical in detail so before going into a practical uh, I like to explain a list of uh, features of a cell script so this is a list of features cell script have uh, so first is a uh, cell script can be invoked as a command by using their file name so like uh, we, we can create a cell script and we can place that script uh, into a system path and then that script name same work like a same as a command so you can invoke a script as a command second is maybe use interactively or non interactively that means like in cell script we can take a user input as well so i will show you how how we can take a input from a user during the cell script run in our practical then it allows both synchronous and asynchronous executions of command so then that also we do practical like how how we send some commands into background process and the next is provides a set of built-in commands so cell has many built-in commands like earlier we have seen uh, echo command c9 echo so this is echo command let me so open some built-in commands yeah so here in manual you see uh, at the top there is a lot of uh, commands that cell has built in so that that we can use into our, our script then provides a flow control construct and quotation facilities and functions so there is many flow control constructs are there like if is there for conditional uh, matching and conditional construct and the switch case is there while is there for four is there so that kind of uh, conditional flow control is there uh, and then let's say cell as a typeless variable so we can define a variable a variable can have a, any type of value provides a local and global variable scope that uh, we already learned like we can have a functional level scope of variable or we can have a global scope then it's a script duo not required compilation before execution because uh, script is run by cell and cell cell is like uh, interpreter it don't require a compilation prior no limit on a string length when interpreting a cell script like when we execute any command into a cell it has a limit like this command length not goes beyond some characters but uh, when we uh, when we add that commands into cell script then there, there is no limit as such so yeah this is that feature I wanted to highlight now let's move to next slide so in this particular lecture we'll do a practical of uh, synchronous and asynchronous command execution 
I, I, I will tell you about send special variables and return status of script and some conditional construct we will do practical on for okay so let's move to a cell so i'm in script directory so earlier we have we did one script so for this second practical session let's create a new file called p2.sh okay so first line always is as bank so i like a bash cell so i'm writing bin bash now let me type some basic echo statement echo and writing message one and I am adding slip command. So slip command basically slips uh, this particular cell process for provided number of second. So I'm adding five seconds. So during execution of slip command, this this cell uh, slip wait for five seconds before going to next uh, command, right? And after that, I am writing a message too. So this is very simple script so I written this to show you asynchronous and synchronous processing and so now let me move to a second cell for execution second tab I have open I mean same location okay so now let's run p2.sh from home directory it says permission denied I need to add execution permission to p2.sh Okay, I did. Now let's run p2.sh. So you see the message one appears. Now it's waiting for five second, and then message two is appears. That means uh, this all is in synchronous. Once the first command complete, then and then it going to second. Once the second complete, it going to third command or third instruction. But suppose uh, I want to execute this second slip command in asynchronous manner, then what I can do is like uh, I can add this M person at the end of uh, command. So this M person meaning run this command into background. So when cell encounter this particular instruction it uh, directly execute into sub cell as a separate background process and it go ahead with a next line into a script okay let's check now so i written this now if i run this p2.sh it execute very quickly because message when message two directly coming and the slip command going into background background okay so that's about asynchronous and synchronous command execution now let let learn about some cell special variable should for that so when when we script when we execute a script we can provide a positional parameters to as an input to a script right earlier we we did a practical on that so there is a, some one special variable dollar at the red using which we can combine that all uh, positional parameter into a single string so let me show you that positional param string so that is dollar at the right next line there is one other special variable also dollar star that is also combines all positional params into a single string but there is minor difference between the, these two 
so what is the difference between these two I will explain you uh, let me remove this previous comments okay. then there is third special variable called dollar has so dollar has basically gives us a count of uh, total number of arguments we have supplied so let's say total number of arguments or positional parameters that is dollar has then one other uh, special variable is called dollar dollar that is that gives us a current process id so when when we execute this script basically it gives us this script process id right the cell which is running this script so process id is dollar dollar the next is um, process name process or command name so as we earlier learned like a positional parameter we can access via dollar one dollar two so same way there is a dollar zero the dollar zero represents the the command so zero's position is command then the first argument is assigned a to a dollar one so let's check now this script writing this executing this into second cell p2 dot search so here you see a positional parameter string is blank number of positional uh, total number of argument is zero process id is 88904 and the command name at a zero position so let now add some arguments so i added a b c as a one two three argument now i execute here you see like a b c a b c so this is dollar at the at output this is uh, dollar star output uh, this is uh, number of argument dollar has output this is output of dollar dollar variable and this is a output of dollar zero variable now assume like if i want to provide some argument having space character in between so i can combine that kind of input or i need to quotation that kind of input so now a and b represents a first argument and c is a second argument if i run this you see a two argument but still like in this particular output you see a b c because first argument also having a space and this string is also formed using space separation so you can't notice like uh, which is a first argument first argument has a space or not b is a second argument or it's a part of first argument that we can't derive so for that uh, differentiation in dollar at the rate it reads some special variable that special variable cell reserved variable called ifs in ifs we can give a field separator like here if i give ifs colon then while combining all uh, positional parameter dollar at the rate use this variable and combine that using a colon character uh, let me show you that now if i run this you see here yeah, um, the first a b then colon and c but uh, dollar at the rate always combines all argument using space so yeah now we are going through a cell space now let's check the return status or exit status so there is one also other special variable called dollar question mark so dollar question mark always returns the uh, the 
exist status of last command in a cell so your last command is echo so let me add some other command let's say i'm adding ls minus l let's say test.txt so there is no such file as of now in our directory right test so this command should get fail then i'm checking the, the exit status of last command now let me run this one so here you see ls text.txt no such file or directory command is filled and exit status of last command is one let's let's see if i add that file test.txt so this i use touch command to create a new file so file is created now if i run this script it's still saying no such file sorry i am to edit file name text instead of test so let me create one other file test and now if i run this you see that file is found and ls command printed output and exit status is zero same way when the script is run script also have their exit status that i can check here using dollar question mark because our script runs successfully giving a zero status but if i want to exit this script using some other status code then i can emit that status code as well using exit command so let's say i if i write last statement exit to here and, and if i execute the script so now script is exited with the status code 2 that i can check using echo dollar question mark so you see output is 2 of this dollar question mark So that's about uh, cell exit code and return status. Now let's move to a conditional construct uh, loop, switch case, and for. So for that, let me remove this existing lines first. So first and very basic uh, conditional construct is if so uh, for that let read some value as an input from a user in this script so I'm using read command so using read we can we can ask a user to enter some values so for that let me add message for user enter number and then I say read I so now basically user has enter some value that value get added into variable name I now if I want to check like value added is greater than 10 or less than 10 right when when I can use if statement so this is the structure of if so if else and fy that is reverse of if to end the condition so if this condition whatever condition we write here if that match the whatever we write into this first part 
that get execute else whatever we write into a second part that get execute so let check if dollar i greater than 10 gt means greater than then adding a message number is greater than 10 else i say here number is less than 10 So here the space is very important in this if statement so after square bracket we should have one space and then condition should start otherwise shell interpreter gives us error now I'm saving this script uh, let me clear the screen and executing that script p2.sh here you see enter number and now script is waiting for uh, user input in interactive mode so let me add so now i have added input 5 here let's see output oh saying syntax error unexpected else let's check for scenario oh, sorry i forget then so actually construct it was like if then else something if condition match then this then block is executed otherwise else block is executed so let me write this one and execute again now i'm adding the same input again so it says yes number is less than 10 if i enter let's say 11 it says the number is greater than 10 so yeah this one is basic if statement now let's check for a switch statement switch case kind of statement conditional so, so for that again i'm reading input from user uh, let us some other input from user let me create a food menu or drink menu t second option is coffee now i'm asking from user enter your choice then case case dollar i in so dollar i in one then something if dollar i value match with the two then we do something and then and of case so let us again a reverse ESAC so this is a format of case statement so in a case we provide a variable or anything that we want to match and then we write the matching parameters using this uh, round bracket so case i in one then we ex uh, write that users choice is t and then we need to break this first section so for that we, we need to add double semicolon that is for break so after this double semicolon it don't go beyond to match 
uh, other parameters. Users says coffee. Left, right. Executing this. Your choice. I add first user choice is T as the output. If I add it to user choice is coffee. So here this double semicolon is very important. If we want it, it continue or match other block as well even it match with one block we can write multiple as well into a single like for choice one and two or choice one and three i want to have this same block then i can use or operator here that is pipe so let's say equal three and that is again green tea let's say okay so now I execute this now adding three here still it match first because uh, First block, first block match either one or three. Yes, yeah, so that's about case statement. Now let learn about four. So four structure is like this: four variable in and your list of value for variable in the list do something and that is done so here if i provide a list of input for each and every item in list this block of code get executed that is that we write between do and done so let me take some practical example like for example if you want to output the content of uh, all files into a particular directory using for loop then how, how we can do that for that uh, let me create some directory here mkdr test so this test directory I have added now let me add some files there test slash a so I'm creating a, a file with name A into test directory. I'm adding file with name B into test directory. Now if I see a, a, a test a, a and B name file, let me add some content into file A. So I'm redirecting this echo using this redirection operator to a test A file same way I'm adding some echo statement into file B so now check the content of this file test A and then if A test B as B now if we want all this content to be listed as output using four and then let's do that so variable name defined as a file so for file in and we need all files here from test directory for that here we can also execute command so this is command substitution syntax dollar and round bracket so in that we can write a command so I'm saying ls test directory. So when this command execute, basically it finds a two file a and b. So first a is assigning to file variable, then b is assigning to 
file name so for that I need to execute here cat command cat what I need to get test and dollar file so basically this statement cat command so that basically read and uh, writes the output of uh, that uh, files into console so let me execute this one p2.sh so you see the output from both file as a console output because i want to remove all the file of in this particular directory then I can use rm command okay well, first to ensure like right file first we need to do ls command before executing this rm kind of file so it's best practice to ensure like you are removing correct files better to execute and ensure like this and remove file from a current directory test one and test test a and test b so let execute rm so script is executed and now i check test directory the test directory is empty all files inside the directory is removed so yeah so that's all about uh, conditional structures there are many other like select is also there while is also there but uh, all has a similar structure where, where you can match condition and then that block is executed uh, so in a while statement the same condition that uh, while block continue execute until that condition are written a true okay so in this session we have learned synchronous asynchronous command execution cell special variables written status so all necessary basics of the script now we have learned so with this uh, ending this session thank you thank you very much hello friends and welcome back so in this session we learn about the input output redirection in the cell so we'll run we'll learn redirection output appending redirected output how we mix the standard output and standard errors and also we learn about pipes so let's move to a cell prompt so yeah so in linux unix kind of system there is three standard streams one is called standard input that is whose uh, file descriptor is zero other stream is called standard output std out also we call it in short so file descriptor for that is one and third one is standard error so file descriptor is two so, so let's try to understand what this file and uh, file descriptors and how redirection works right so let, let's say I'm running here ls minus l command or simply printing the old file into current directory if I say ls minus l and some dummy words then it's throwing error no such file or directory so the when I run this command first its command is success so whole output command has uh, thrown is written on the standard output stream 
while in second command the whole output is written in the standard error stream okay currently both standard output and standard error stream is redirected to this console so both in both case we are getting the output in console but let now use the redirection operator so let's say ls minus l and now i wanted to redirect this into some file output so this less than is a redirect uh, operator that redirect the standard output okay so it redirects standard output to a file name called output if this uh, file does not exist then it create it okay so let's check that okay now if we get output then here in the output we are getting the whole output of ls minus l command okay now again like i on the output uh, uh, list the p2.sh and then if i check output and so it overrides the last content and now we have on new content new output right if we want to preserve previous output as well that means if we want uh, redirection with appending existing content right then we can use double less than so now i'm using same command but redirecting to output using double less than now let's see You see now now we have a output appended into existing output okay so this about uh, standard output redirection now now let, let's check the standard error okay so for example i i run ls minus l and some dummy file name which is not exist and i'll redirect into output again okay here we get uh, no such file or directory but in console uh, output file it's nothing because the command has thrown the error and that is error is written into standard out error stream instead of output stream so in standard out we we are not getting any output but if we want to redirect both output and error to any file right then then we can use this m percent less than so in that, that case it redirect both standard out and error both into this file so now we get that inside the file There is also one other notation for this operation is as well. So for that we can write in this way as well. Two less than n percent one. Now if we can check the output, we get that. So what the meaning of this? So first of all, uh, I will. Uh, I will I did ls minus l command and then redirected it to output file so this operator just redirects the standard output and what here i have done is like i have addressed the standard uh, standard error file descriptor to standard out so even whole output of standard error goes into a standard out so this way we can switch the error descriptor as well file descriptor as well sorry okay now let learn about pipes so pipe basically uh, take a standard out of one command and it redirect as to some 
other command as a standard input so, so example let's write some test echo message so test message okay now let's say this echo command write this message to a standard output now i want that output to be an input of some other command then i can use a pipe operator so here i'm redirecting or redirecting this output as an input to a grab command so in grab command i can use grab test so yeah let's just find me grab oh, I, let, let me use state command so you get uh, more, more understanding on this set is basically stream editor where where in stream of uh, data we can we can replace or change something said and inside there is we can substitute something so, so let's substitute test with uh, my so instead test message i want a my message okay so you see uh, first command is test message but uh, in the stream said has replaced test with my then i can write like this as well but if i write m percent 2 here so you see now difference between these two command uh, in first command i have redirected a message to a, a standard standard output stream only and that output i have redirected as an input to a side command but in second command what i did i changed the file description so standard output is also going as a standard error in a error stream so set command not getting that as an input and it getting our original message only so it's showing original message I hope you understand this. So, thank you very much for attending this lecture.